वेलकम टू पार्ट हिस्ट्री यूट्यूब चैनल सब्सक्राइब आवर चैनल फॉर रेगुलर नोटिफिकेशन एंड फॉलो आवर ऑफिशियल फेसबुक पेज टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द ट्रेड पैटर्न ऑफ हरप्पन कल्चर द मैच्योर हरप्पन सिविलाइजेशन मेड यूज ऑफ एन एक्सटेंसिव ट्रेड नेटवर्क बोथ विद इन एंड पास इट्स टेरिटोरी Harappa was one of the largest cities of the civilization which also means it was a major hub of trade This means that a lot of resources passed through the city not only local goods but goods from beyond the Harappan civilization from places such as Mesopotamian civilization Shotugai was a Harappan outpost in the Himalayan mountains in the current day Takhan province of Afghanistan the placement of the outpost put it on the Oxus river from here the Harappans were able to import raw materials from Badakhshan the number one resource that was processed and passed through Shortugai was lapis lazuli the desire for lapis lazuli was likely the reason behind creating this outpost it also worked other resources such as copper and other metals a mature harappan city incredibly well planned while lothal was relatively small it was a major trade and manufacturing city on the coast evidence of a large variety of different raw materials and finished goods from surrounding areas are found given the evidence it was clear that a great surplus of goods were created in lothal for more than the inhabitants could have needed which means the surplus was traded off possibly they traded with hunter gatherers in the area gaining the raw materials in exchange for the finished goods the mainland routes leaving the harappan civilization led to various surrounding civilizations these routes were important to the lapis lazuli trade Through these routes the Harappan civilization was connected with central asia and places like mesopotamia within the harappan area on the ghaggar saraswati system upstream of sirsa we find a local culture that we may call sothi siswal there are also a large number of sites 165 according to gregory possel representing only the sothi siswal material culture some of the sothi sites have yielded a few artifacts showing harappan contact some years ago the small village site of kunal north of hisar attracted public attention as the harappan finds are not distributed across the different houses of the site we cannot interpret kunal as a harappan site kodiji is the name given to another pre-urban culture after the type site of kodiji radiocarbon dates for materials from kodijian context indicate that this regional culture originated earlier and then continued as a contemporary of the harappan a political frontier may well have developed between these two cultural areas that blocked northward expansion of the harappan system into areas with god soils and higher winter rainfall to the west of the harappan world in the arid mountain region of southern baluchistan was the contemporary kulli culture the kulli province would have been important because it lies across 
land routes of the Makran coastal stations. It was inferred many years ago that local Chalcolithic cultures of Saurashtra could have predated the urban Harappan and then coexisted with it. In Rajasthan and Malwa, we find simple food producing cultures utilizing stone tools with some knowledge of copper. Artifacts from the neighboring sites have gone unnoticed or unrecognized at the major city site excavations or else items crafted with skill at Harappan centers moved out to the technologically less developed groups. In any exchange or encounter the Harappan would obviously have held the initiative. Moreover, it could have been the natural resources of their neighbors and contemporaries that the Harappans coveted not their crafts or inchoate craft skills. Before the urban period, there were sites along what has been through history a major world route. The route from Kandahar, an important agricultural node of Afghanistan and itself a major node of land roads via Chaman and the Khojak Pass to the Kuwaita Valley and continuing southeastward through the Bolan Pass to descend on the Kochi Plain on the frontier between Baluchistan and Sindh. Near Kandahar, we find one of the few large stretches of arable land in mountainous Afghanistan, the crosslands of Asia. Sheep and goat herders moved towards Kandahar in the winter from hills farther south, east and north and also up the Helmand River from the southwest. A quantity of debris from bead cutting has been found in the residential areas and one or two graves at Shahari Shokta have bead makers tool kits interred with the dead. The most fascinating aspect of Shahari Shokta is its location. It is accessible from Kandahar by a route down the Helmand used by pastoralists. It is connected with the Tetzen Delta and Turkmenia in the north by a major natural highway with exceptionally good pastures. Shahari Shokta and Mundigak had links with Mehergarh and the Kuwaita sites in the pre-Harappan period but none later with the mature Harappan sites. A much greater distance away across the high mountain region of Afghanistan, the Turkmenia, there was a somewhat parallel development of cultures from the Neolithic to the Bronze Age. There are hints of interaction between the Indus Valley and Turkmenia or Central Asia, the two civilizations being partly contemporary. These interactions may not have been through trade in the literal sense. At Harappan sites, there are bronze pins with their heads in the form of superbly fashioned animals plus small bronze flagons with long necks that are very Central Asian. There is a seal at Horoppa depicting a heraldic eagle which again is a link with Central Asia. On the other side at Altian Deb, ochre aged cornelian beads, ivory rods or batons, a silver amulet and seals, all of which may have originated in the Harappan culture. One of the seals occurred in a sepulchre that was connected with the funerary rites of the elite. A large and beautiful aged cornelian bead came from a rich grave 
as did a silver amulet in the form of a three-headed feline. These fine spots and association with the dead and the relative paucity of Horopan artifacts in Turkmenia may speak for their symbolism rather than any commodity value. Sea roots were important to the Harappan civilization. They were important for the trade and gathering of sea shells. Trade routes ran along the coast and into the Gulf of Oman and the Persian Gulf. If we were sail west in the Harappan ship, the first halt after Shutkagen door, as far as we know, would have been near Muscat in copper rich Oman. In northern Oman, around the end of the 4th millennium BCE, a fine painted pottery of Mesopotamian origin dating roughly 3100 to 2900 BCE occurs in some graves. This has been interpreted as evidence for an early Mesopotamian copper coast. At coastal sites, centuries later, scattered remains of Horopan and Horopan related artifacts were found. If we sail into the Gulf keeping to its northern shore until we are opposite the peninsula of Qatar, we can turn southwest to the Bahrain archipelago. Perhaps it was the miracle of sweet water artesian wells on land as well as offshore that gave Dilmun as Bahrain and also Phylaka island of Kuwait was called a special place in Mesopotamian mythology. In Bahrain, we have evidence of Harappan artifacts. Also, weighing procedures at this entrepot followed the Harappan weight system. This is testified by excavated stone weights as well as references in Mesopotamian texts to the moon or unit of weight of Dilman. Mesopotamia was a major participant in the trade of the world, the greatest consumer of shell, lapis, gold, silver, and cornelian. Horopan shells and etched cornelian beads are found in Mesopotamian royal burials. Several small monkey figurines occur in Mesopotamia, although the monkey is not native to Western Asia. The animal which some Harappans may have taken abroad with them as a pet, appears to have held a fascination for Mesopotamians. Mesopotamian clay tablets refer to certain varieties of wood and to gold and lapis lazuli coming from Meluha. Ivory too was a Harappan item used in southern Mesopotamia. Their kings recorded with pride the arrival of Meluha boats at their docks. Mesopotamia was a land with no stone, metal or good wood, neither a seafaring nation nor a maritime economy. From the movement of artifacts and the testimony of the tablets we can tell that the trade and seafaring initiative lay largely with Harappans. Stray Harappan weights and seals and the seal of an interpreter of Meluha language at Mesopotamian sites testify to the residence of Harappans abroad. An eastern neighbor of Mesopotamia was Iranian Ilam. Often incorporating not only the lowlands adjacent to the Tigris-Euphrates plain but also the Jagros uplands to their east. At Susa, a political center in the lowland, Harappan type artifacts have been found. It is not known whether 
there was direct interaction between Elam and South Asia or whether the material came to Susa via the Mesopotamian cities. So we can conclude that beside the relations between Harappan people with its neighboring cultures, there was a long distance connection between Central Asian people and Harappan inhabitants. This is the end of our today's discussion. Subscribe our channel to get regular notification and follow our official Facebook page. For any query, feel free to mail us. For details, see the description.